we're talking about something called side channel uh, attacks. Um, so in this section, we're going like, to concentrate mostly on power side channel attacks. Um, but I'm going to give you a little background to what we mean when we talk about a side channel attack. Okay, so a side channel attack in general um, is this case where we have some algorithm. So normally it's a security algorithm like encryption, right? We have the input, we have the output, and there's always some secret, right? So we would normally have like a key um, here, right? That's super se secure and no nobody is able to know that key. And that's the whole security of the algorithm relies on that or, or is designed to really protect that key, not relies on. Um, so if this key is leaked, it's very bad. Um, and the algorithms are almost always designed such that if you knew the input and output, and even if you knew lots and lots of the input and outputs, there's no way to derive that key. So um, knowing the input and output is fine, right? Knowing the key is bad. Um, what a side channel attack does is it uses, there's some other information that sort of leaks out. So as, you're, as the attacker is running it, um, there's some information that is somehow connected you know, somewhere to the algorithm or to the key itself. Um, and this tiny leak allows them to recover the key. Um, so that's a very, you know, encryption focused description of a side channel attack. Um, there's lots of other examples of side channels in a very general sense, right? So a, a pretty like sort of classic one is this pizza side channel. Um, and so there was something they started calling the pizza index, which is Domino's delivery. Um, in areas where the U.S. government, you know, had a heavy presence. Um, so if you were around the Pentagon and stuff like that, they would actually have a delivery index of how many takeout pizzas they got late at night, right? Because if people are staying there late at night, that's not normal. If there's a lot of people there, something's going on. Um, so I found this article from January 16th, 1991, um, and they had a, a, a news release, right, saying the pizza index indicates military action is imminent. Obviously there was a lot of tension then. Um, so it was known something was happening. Um, and you know, the, there's this pizza delivery guy saying, you know, record number of late night pizzas has been delivered. Um, and they suspect something is, is going on. Um, and so if in January 16, 1991, uh, basically the next day, the Gulf War air campaign started here. Um, so, this was, I think, Operation Desert Storm is what this was, was known as, but you basically had this campaign that actually did start right then. Um, so side channels are always available to leak information, right? There's tons and tons of examples of that where there's some unintended leakage of information. Okay, so we care about embedded systems. Um, we're gonna concentrate on a few specific ones. So we're going to look at um, timing side channels we're going to look at power side channels and related to that is RF or electromagnetic emission side channels. Um, these are sort of the obvious ones that you'll, you'll find a little bit of information available or quite a bit of information available. There's other ones out there. Um, so acoustic, so devices actually can have different sounds as they're doing different operations, heat. Um, uh, and, and so s sometimes it's like, there's another thing besides side channel that I don't have on the slides called covert channel. Right, and so um, a slight addition to side channel that I should have added is covert channel, which is basically where you're trying to extract information from a system, often using the side channel. Um, you know, if you had a server locked in a room, uh, maybe you can heat up the server by running a lot of tasks to indicate that um, you want to send a, a one bit and you reduce the load to reduce the heat um, to send a zero bit. So these assume there's some way to monitor that side channel as well. But um, with a covert channel, we're specifically sending information. With a side channel, we're just passively observing. Um, okay, so here's an example of a timing side channel, right? So we're gonna jump right into code here. Um, we have a little password match function, right? And so we put in a password at the, the top here um, and we have a, a known good password inside it. And what we do is that for, we loop over the password and we just, you know, it's pretty straightforward. We just check, is the password good? Does it match um, the correct password? As soon as it doesn't match, well, let's return a zero, right? So let's return zero um, because it doesn't match. Where this becomes an issue is let's imagine you had a, a pin pad, right? And you're entering a password on this pin pad 
right? And so you have whatever, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and we'll put nine, zero here. Um, and you had like a, an okay LED or a bad LED and put an okay LED too, make green. Right, so if you were an attacker, um, you could, if, if you had this really basic implementation here, um, you could do something, you know, really simple, which is as soon as it sees a wrong uh, password, um, it's indicating a, uh, a fail. So if you entered like one, two, three, four, right, and the correct password was one, two, 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 um, it's going to compare the first character, compare the second character, and then fail. Right versus if you enter in one two three two, it's going to compare the first, second, third character and then fail. So there's going to be some time difference between when the red LED versus when the green LED comes on. Um, so that's like a, a really classic timing side channel. Um, my face is in the way here. Um, a really classic timing side channel. Right. So this can happen in all sorts of ways. It doesn't have to be so obvious in the code as this, um, but normally there's some difference in the execution between um, like a correct and incorrect password or, or key or something like that. Um, so fundamentally, how do you find this? Uh, if you take the, the function, so let's say we had our um, test, or what was that called? Does password match? Uh, that's too long. Let's just call it test password function, right? So say I was trying to, to do a timing side uh, check or timing side channel analysis check, right? I could put in a password like hello and then put another password, pass one, right? And, and a few different passwords where some of them are right, some of them are wrong, some have some of the, um, the password correct. And I could see what the execution time is, right? So if this is 1.2 microseconds and this is 1.3 microseconds, this could indicate a timing side channel. It also could just be random noise. So what I should do is I should also put back in that hello again, right? And if I see 1.2 microseconds again, it's a good sign that there might may be some timing side channel because with hello, it's always this, this one time with a different password, it's a different time. Um, so that suggests there's some timing side channel in there. Oops. Um, early work. So one of the, the earlier side channels that we sort of demonstrated was actually an RF uh, or EM side channel in, in terms of breaking sort of security devices. Um, so during World War II, it was known that devices that were um, securing, so sort of like these typewriters that actually created cipher codes. Uh, we talked a little bit about Enigma, which was sort of electromechanical. So um, I think it was later ones than that, but that type of device, right? So you had a, a mechanical or electrical device um, and that electrical device um, could emit signals and the emissions vary depending on what's being encrypted. Um, you can even uh, use this to kind of view monitors. So this was actually shown quite a while ago with um, cathode ray tube, the old style monitors, but you can do it with new ones too. So there's even like a little, and I have this cool link here, um, using these really low cost software to find radio. So you can actually do some pretty cool stuff if you want to play with this. Um, and you can see in this photo here, there's an antenna, you know, it's pretty near, but there's a, a display here and you can actually view the display. And so that's what's being recovered um, just through the, the emissions of it. Um, a really nice one, and we're going to talk more about this, is power side channel, right? So you probably noticed that if you do stuff on your phone, like if you're playing games, right, there's a much higher usage than when you're browsing the red, the, the web, sorry. Um, so you can actually do this in a really fine grain level. So you can actually tell, you know, within this code, um, as it's executing different sections of the code, we can actually see that in the power uh, side channel. So, um, we're going to look into a little more detail in the next uh, lecture about how that actually works. But, um, in general side channels are this unintended emission of information, right? So it's emitted in some un unintended channel. It's not the regular communications channel. It's not a communications error. Um, and we can observe these side channels to recover secret information. So um, if we have these conditions, we generally have this side channel attack.